Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to do optic tracking with the AS1 framework. So in one of the previous videos, we talked about like how we can set up optic detection and also how we can set up the AS1 framework, install it on our own computer. So this is actually like a really nice framework to be able to swap out different kind of like optic detectors and also optic tracking algorithms. So we're going to take a look at it in this video here. We're both going to do it on a pre-recorded video and also on a live webcam stream. So let's just jump into it and see how we can use these trackers with the AS1 framework. So we're going to jump straight into Visual Studio Code. We're going to see how we can actually like set up the code and then we're going to run some examples. Here I'm just going to like run over the code. We're going to talk about like how we can do different kind of like customizations and then we're going to see how it works. If you want to know like how to set it up, how to do all the customizations and so on, I already have videos about that for my introduction to the AS1 framework and also when we did optic detection. But here we can see that first of all, we need to import AS1. So this is the video one that we have. I have basically just cl uh, cloned the GitHub repository for AS1. Then we can see we have the AS1, some data. So we also have some example data in here. We have the YOLO 7 model. We can also swap between all the other different kind of like YOLO models. Uh, so this is actually like a really nice framework. You can just change between all the different kind of like optic detectors and also optic trackers as we have here. So basically, let's just take a look at the video here. And then I've just created two fonts, tracking live and tracking video. The first one we're going to take a look at is the trade uh, tracking video. So import AS1 from AS1. We import this AS1 model where we can set up our tracker and our optic detector. So first of all here, we just need to initialize an optic with the AS1 class. So we first of all, we can set up a tracker. So we set a tracker equal to AS1 dot by track. We can also specify the detector. So detector equals to AS1 dot v 7 PyTorch. And then we can also like specify all these other different kind of like detectors that they have, which might actually like be in, able to go in here and see how we can specify it. So here you can see all the different kind of like optic detection models that we have, and also the trackers. So we have PyTrack, DeepSort, uh, Norfair, ModPy, OZ Sword, and Strong Sword. And then we can try out different kind of like trackers on the examples that I'm going to show you in just a second. We can also choose between all these different kind of like YOLO V5, YOLO V6, 7, YOLO R, and also YOLO X. We also have the O and X format for those if you want to use that um, instead. So really cool. We can also see here that we have the YOLO V8. So we can actually go in and try the YOLO V8 model instead. Uh, so let's just take, uh, let's for example, say the small model. So we're just going to take the PyTorch version of that. We'll go back inside our tracking video, change the detector here, use CUDA. We set that equal to true. So if you have a GPU available with CUDA, it will use that and it will speed up the processing significantly. So it's acts like a bit of processing to do when we're running these optic trackers on top of the optic detection algorithms. We can also go in and fill the classes here based on the different classes that we have in the Kogo data set. So you can basically just like specify here if you want to detect like certain classes, you can also have your own custom classes as well if you're trained your optic detector. So right now we're just going to fill the class here we can specify it down when we're going to track it in the video or else if we don't specify anything it will just track all the classes or detect all the classes in the Kogo data set. So now we can go down and get the tracking function. So we just set track equal to detect. So detect is the object that we initialized up here or create an instance of the AS1 class. Then we can call this method track video. We throw in the data example video test.mp4. We throw in the output directory data and results. We're going to save the results. We're going to display the results. And then we're also going to draw the trails of all the objects tracked in the image. We also have some other different kind of parameters. You can look it up in the GitHub repository, or we can basically just go inside our track video. If we then scroll down a bit, we should be able to see all the different kind of like parameters. So yeah, here we can see we have something called like FPS, output directory, file name, save results, display, draw trails, and also these class names. So here we can set the class names equal to the filter class names if you want to do specific um, specific um, detections. So let's just run it here. And then after that, we have this track. We can just have a for loop running through all the tracked objects that we have in the frame. We can extract the bounding box, the X, Y, X, Y corners of the bounding box, so the top left corner and the bottom right corner. We will also get the optic IDs. So when we're going to track it, we will keep the ID for each of the individual objects. We also get the confidence scores and our class IDs. We can also extract the frame, frame number and number of frames per seconds that we have. And then we can basically just do anything here with the bounding boxes and the ex results that we have extracted from our tracking. So let's now just run here and then we're going to run this test example video. 
first of all, we need to go in and open a new terminal. So I'll just do that. Here we're going to open up this terminal and then we're going to activate the environment. You can see I've already done that. Links for, to that, like how you can set it up is already in the videos that I have with the AS1 framework here on, um, on my YouTube channel, but we can basically just go in and call environment and then we'll have backslash scripts backslash activate. And then we're basically just going to activate our uh, virtual environment here in Python and you should be able to run um, our script. So now we can basically just type in Python tracking video. So I'm just going to change it to video. Now we should be able to run it and we should go through the video example. We'll just wait here and see towards version 2.0.1. We're using CUDA. So it should act like one run fairly fast. Let's just see what we get. First of all, we're downloading the model weight for our YOLO V8 small model. We should also be able to see it over here. So now we have YOLO 6, 7, and we also have YOLO 8. You can just see like how fast it actually like processes these frames. So it's around like 20, 20 milliseconds per frame. So this actually goes fairly fast. We can see we have 250 frames. Now it is done act like just going through the whole video. We should be able to see it over in the outputs to the left. So I'll just zoom out a bit. And then here we should be able to have an output folder here. So we, let's go inside data. We have the results and then we have this test file.mp4. So we can see that is here. So let's just try to open that reveal in file explorer. I'll drag it over here and we should be able to see this test video. So again, this looks pretty nice. Again, we can go in and fill the results right now. We're just detecting like all the classes that we have in the frame and we can also see the tracks um, here as well. I'll just do this. So here we see all the tracks behind the cars. We even keep the ID. Sometimes it switches color, but we can see if we keep the exact same ID for each of the cars because we're doing this tracking instead of just optic detection on each individual frame. If you want to know more about like how we can set up optic trackers, how optic trackers work under the hood, I actually like have courses both for optic detection and optic tracking with Yolo V7 and Yolo V8, where I go over like all the details, how we can actually like implement these trackers from scratch in your own code, how to work under the hood with the Kalman filler, all the statistics and the theory behind it. So if you're interested in knowing what is actually going on, on and on a lower like theoretical level, I have those courses if you're interested. So this was actually like pretty nice, some really good results that we get out just from running these color lines of code. So it's now going to do it with our tracking live. So I'll just go in here. We basically just have to do the exact same thing. I haven't really like changed anything here. Instead of calling track video, we just call track webcam. We throw in the cam ID here to our webcam. If you want to output the, the, the result as well, we can also do that into our directory. And then we basically just save a, um, a video of the inference that we're doing with our live webcam moving around. If you want to set the results, um, I don't really want to do that now. We could just do it. Let's just set it equal to true. And we also want to display it. And we also want to draw the trails here for all the objects that we're tracking. So now we should actually be able to go down and just run this Python script as well. So tracking live. Now we're going to run it. It will open up the webcam. I have the webcam here. And then we should be able to see it in just a second. So here now, right now we're using the Yolo V7. So before we specified Yolo V8, it's kind of running the same. We should get the results up here. So yeah, here you can see right now we're detecting like all the objects. We can see them I have my keyboards here. We have my two mouses. Um, we can basically just see like the objects that we detect and track. I'll just move the camera around. We can see that right now I have ID 24 and then we can track me around in the image frame uh, and we don't really lose track. We can also see the potted plant in the background. Let's just face the camera over here. So these are actually some pretty nice results. We can see we have the 55 as the ID for the potted plant. Let's just try to like lower it a bit. Let's get back, still 55. So again, this is actually like a pretty nice tracker. We can move it around. Even though we lost track of it here, it still keeps the same ID. So this is actually like pretty nice. Um, as you can see, you only have to specify a couple of lines of code. I run around 15 frames per second. Again, this is actually like a lot of processing that is needed to be able to run real-time optic trackers. I'm using a NVIDIA GPU um, 4090. So it's a, it's a graphic card on the higher end, but you can you can probably like run it on lower hardware as well. You can run some of the lower models and so on, or like the smaller models. Let's try to test out some of the other trackers. So let's go inside the trackers. 
um, track webcam. Oh, we can just go in here. And we also have Deep Sword, Nullerfair, ModPy, OCR, Sword, and Strong Sword. I know the Strong Sword is also really good, so let's try that. Strong Sword, and let's just go down and run it again. Should also be able to see the results over here to the left. After that, so data results. This is just like overriding this one here. Nope, we just have another result video here, but we're not overriding that yet. So here we see which strong sword. It is a better algorithm, but it also takes up like way more processing time, as you can see. Like I'm running this on a 4090 GPU and I get around seven frames per second. So this is very, very slow. And this, this wouldn't really be uh, good enough to run it in, um, in a real time applications, as you, as you can see. But you can see it just keeps track of everything. Like it is really good at keeping track, um, even though the optics are occluded or maybe if it's taken away from the frame. Here we have 76 on this keyboard here. 75, 75, 125. So sometimes when I get the correct ID, it changes back and forth. But if we have it in the frame, if it doesn't change like too fast, it acts like has very good tracking here. As you can see, I can also try to turn the camera around. And then we see the potted plant and the chair in the background again, which is just, it is just tracking all these objects here so nicely. Um, and it's, it's just really good. So now we should be able to see the results here when we're terminating our program. So now we get a video. It is just sped up with the number of frames per second. You can probably like specify that. But here we can just directly see the outputs that we have from our live camera feed. This also probably takes up some processing power by just like visualizing the results here or like storing the results as well into a video file. So you can try to like run with smaller models. You can also try out all the other different kind of like trackers. But the good thing about this framework from AS1 is that we can just easily swap out all the object trackers, try out different kind of like object trackers for a specific application or project that you're doing and also swap out the detector. So again, before you had to like clone all the repositories, merge them together, like swap around the files. Now you can just go in and specify um, an argument and you can set up a detector and also a tracker. If you don't specify a tracker here, it will only do optic detection, um, but I have videos covering all of that. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And again, remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. Also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. And again, I have these courses here where we cover like everything from optic detection, optic tracking in theory, like how it is Im implemented um, in act like code. What are they based on? They're based on the Kalman filter. We go over that, the theory behind that, and how we, we can actually like implement it. Also, how we can use these trackers here in our own Kotlin Python script if we don't want to just use the AS framework where we just specify parameter and then it just works somehow. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.